to Weekend Live. My name is Mr. Nixon. I'm excited for you to join us today. Uh, please, as you keep on watching, share with other people what, we are, what we're going to be doing today. And in the studio today, we have Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil is one of the uh, key strategists in the Board of Christ that lead, does leadership management and training. And he's come today to be able to discuss on some of the concepts that we want you to be able to, to look at today when we talk about leadership. Welcome, Dr. Phil. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Just give us briefly who is Dr. Phil, what you do, what keeps you ticking. Okay, thank, thank you. So Phil is um, a young man who grew up in the rural areas and uh, was fortunate to go to school, finish school, go to university, and then um, God has uh, helped him to interact with uh, uh, a lot of key leaders and um, and then develop an appetite to look at leadership and, and write about leadership. And so, um, as always, I, I love, I'm intrigued by leaders. How, um, maybe for some people that do not understand, maybe we need to go back to the basics when we talk about leadership. What are we really talking about? Well, uh, first of all, it's a lifestyle, isn't it? You need to, to have values uh, that you espouse and uh, that you then leave and people begin to see you and begin to <coughs> notice how you live and they follow what you do and before you know it, they're asking you, uh, please teach us. Please mentor us, please, uh, you know, coach us on how to live just like what you, what, how you live. You know, one of the leadership gurus said that uh, if you uh, think you are a leader and you don't, uh, you don't have anyone following you, then you're just taking a walk. And so for me, I, I just try to leave. And then everybody else comes and says, teach us. You know, we have seen the model. Please help us live like you. There must be spheres of leadership. Maybe, for example, it could be family leadership, uh, church leadership, mm -hmm. political leadership. Can you take us through some of those spheres that of, of different spheres of leadership where, le where the leadership is ex exercised? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, take, for instance, family leadership. Really, uh, that is where the family is uh, the school where leadership is developed. If you have a parent or a parents that are living right, showing you how to live right, you'll catch up certain traits that will rub on on you and that you will call upon later on in life. There are certain values that I have right now that my father uh, used to teach me. I saw them in my father's life and in my mother's life and um, uh, I always talk about my father because he was a man that loved his wife, that loved his, his, fam his family and that loved us as children and um, I, I strive to do that. So that's family leadership. And then of course church leadership. Uh, we, 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 our model is Jesus Christ. Uh, and my motto is always lead like Jesus. So I look at how Jesus lived. I look at how Jesus impacted people's lives. I, live, I look at how Jesus taught. And, and then I then say to myself, if I can just do a little bit near that, then uh, that's great, that's great. Yeah. Then there's political leadership whereby people get, uh, get chosen and either through different forms of system. Mm -hmm. How does that maybe also transcend in our own society? <sighs> well, electing leaders, uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's really problematic sometimes, you know, because you, you can elect a person that was projecting a certain trait, yet actually they don't need that. So for me, I really would love, I wish <laughs> we would uh, look around and really choose people that uh, live right, uh, work right, and even worship right. 
you know, because uh, we are crying right now because of some of the leaders that we have uh, in, in the political sphere because they are not leading right, you know. And you are like wondering, what did we do? Where did we go wrong? It's always because we chose looking at wrong aspects or wrong traits. Uh, particularly from us in a Christian perspective, we feel that God has called them to be market leaders, uh, leaders in the marketplace. What are those, what's their role uh, that they do play? Market leaders. Well, I call them market apostles. I call them market pastors, market evangelists, market pastors. Uh, one of the things that we need to uh, understand is that he, everyone who is a believer is supposed to be a disciple maker. And so if you are in a boardroom, you are supposed to be a disciple who is discipling others. If you are a, a teacher who is in a classroom, you are supposed to be discipling a disciple who is discipling others. So it doesn't matter where you are, what, what type of marketplace or what type of trade that you are involved in. You need to be a disciple maker. And disciple makers are leaders, you see. Um, you are leading wherever you are. So I personally always encourage people to lead where you are with what you have, you know. It doesn't matter the stage. One of the issues that you, you alluded to when we began, you were talking about values. How important are values uh, is a foundation right across all these sectors and spheres that we have talked about now. What are, what are values? What do we call when we talk about values? And how do those values permeate the different spheres? Yeah, so, so values for me are um, those little things that uh, make up me, the person that you see. Uh, those little ingredients, those little uh, character traits, those little beliefs that are, that are there, that are unchangeable, that are unmovable, that I live by, those to me are values. And I try to make sure that I don't deviate from those values. I always live by them. So everyone has got a value. Um, every company has got a value. And every country has got a value. So, so, so we have certain things that we really believe these are unchangeable. These are the things that we can never negotiate about. And that to me is a, is a value. But values are also, um, aren't values based on, um, or isn't the value system or a belief system that drives one's values so that uh, they can be able to leave their values because there is a certain belief. How much does one's belief uh, in anything that they believe in drives the values, whether it's ambition, whether it's... Uh, what are the issues that drive? Yeah, so there is communal values. <coughs> and in fact, let's start with, 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 with family. So there is a family value where you, 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 you are taught one of the values, say thank you. Hmm? And, and then uh, uh, there's communal uh, 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 values that uh, you say, we talk about Ubuntu, you look after one another. My, my child is raised up by the village, not just by me. You know, that's a value that we have as, as, as a community. And, and then, uh, uh, for instance, there's another, let's say a national uh, value where when there is disaster, we call upon everyone and they rise up and they give towards that particular disaster. So, so those things are, 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 are very important. So, uh, values start in the family, and values can be either cultural or uh, they can also be uh, belief uh, uh, driven. And so, as a Christian, there are certain values that uh, I have. Uh, that drive me, like for instance, love your neighbor as you love yourself, you know. Uh, I have that value, I make sure that whenever I meet with somebody, I really want to say, do I love you as myself? So if I love him as myself, I must be doing something for them that will edify, build and make them better. 
so so those are some of the I'm just giving you a, I, I didn't uh, you know I did not give you in detail what could you know because it's a big topic it's a big topic yeah thank you so much you are watching um weekend live with minister nixon we're excited that you've joined us today and we are inviting you to continue to connect with us at the details that are on your screen we appreciate uh dr phil we have with us in the studio today uh dr phil Chuangira, one of the leadership experts uh in our times and we're excited about what we are going to be exploring today. Dr. Phil, one of the uh, issues that I want to zoom in now is you, you wrote a book. Yes. And the book is called Learn, Lead, Legacy. and Legacy. And that is talking on the life of uh, King, King David. David. Yes. Tell us just briefly what, what the, the book is about. Okay, so uh, briefly, I'm fascinated by personalities in the world. Whenever I'm reading the Bible, I um, kind of look at the people because I uh, love to learn from the people. So when I was uh, uh, reading about David, I read about him and uh, written a little bit about him and read about him again. And uh, I began saying, what are you saying to me as a leader? What are you really saying to me? What would you say to me right now? as a leader, what are some of the lessons that you can teach me? And then uh, I, 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 in about four years, I began getting information and writing and information and writing and then decided that I wanted to focus on his successes and focus on his failures and then also focus on his legacy. And so David is an amazing man because he is as human as you are. Uh, with so many failures and also as a legend with so many victories that even right now Israel still has that star of David and we still talk about Israel when you go to Israel they still talk about David uh, his legacy still is there up to now I don't know how many years <laughs> now lots of lots of years yes M many generations of people sometimes when leaders emerge mm. uh, that are influential globally people name their children after them mm. it is a, uh, because of, of growing in the times with, with, with those leaders yeah. but you you make some very interesting uh, statements to simply say uh, it all must begin with personal credibility what is credibility how do you value credibility uh, can one have a comeback? You talked about David. Mm. Uh, can one who has had issues that have come before, can they recoup and regain their credibility? What is credibility? And if one loses it, how can you be able to pick it up again? So let's first of all start with the last bit of your question. If you lose it, how do you gain it? You know, so... so but what it is? What is it? What credibility for me is just uh, what people buy from you. You know, when they look at you they are, they, and they buy into you, uh, that's credibility uh, to, to me. And then, so if you lose that, what is important and what is distinct with David is that he does not hide it, <laughs> that he has failed. He comes in the open, admits that he, is, uh, he has failed. And then from there, people see that, oh, even great leaders fail. And, uh, and they admit. And so they buy into that. Because you see, they are like saying, oh, he's just like me. And in the meantime, I thought I was such a failure. And this great guy, who is a legend in my, in, uh, according to, to me, he has failed. He has admitted his failure. And he has apologized. And he has repented. And uh, you know what? And, 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 and he's moving on. I can also move on. So to me, that is credibility. Yeah. And, and you say that credibility becomes the foundation of any leader, of any leadership. Yes. So whether it's leadership style, are there different leadership styles? And do they work differently? 
well, they, 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 there are lots of different styles. You know that they, they are books and books about situational uh, leadership, the books about civic leadership. There are uh, lots of books. You can really, uh, you just need to Google and you'll see a lot of leadership styles there. But at the bottom, the very foundation, credibility is the foundation. And, and so because people, before they follow you, they need to buy in you. Remember, people follow people. They don't follow a company. They follow a person. And, uh, and uh, that person with a vision. And before they follow that vision, that, uh, before they follow that person, they must have uh, bought into some value, into some element of credibility in your life. How critical is it? Because sometimes we, you, you say that people buy the, the messenger, mm -hmm. not the message. And, but sometimes we say that you must get the message. Forget about the messenger because the messenger can be corrupted, but the message can must be clear and decoded. How critical is that in terms of balance and leadership? Especially when you are a believer, it is important that the message that you proclaim and the messenger that proclaims that message are in congruence. You know, they is. Uh, a balance. You leave what you proclaim. You know, otherwise people call you a phony, uh, you know, a cheat, uh, you know, a crook, uh, you know, and, and, and we have lots of those ones who say, do this almost um, like Pharisees. Remember what Pharisees used to do in the Bible? Pharisees would say, do as I say, not as I, not do. As I do. And, and one of the issues that you, you talk about is, is the, the, the concept that leadership is earned. It's not just given, but it's earned. But you know, you, you get in different situations whereby the monarchies, whereby kids are born into monarchs, they are born into presumed leadership. How do we balance those? For some of us that do not understand the monarchy concepts how, and are outside of those concepts, how do we? manage the, the, the earning of leadership. of leadership. Do you not go around and tell them, I'm your leader, I'm your leader, I'm your father, I'm your father. <laughs> or, or we let people earn that respect based on our conduct. Uh, so if you view leadership as a title, you then would want for people, for you, yourself to go around and say, I'm your father, I'm your pastor, I'm, I'm the prophet, I'm the founder of this church, I'm the founder of this organization and the like. But you see, for me, leadership to me is just a lifestyle and anyone can lead wherever they are, you see. Uh, so before you become this big person, like for instance, if before you become the king, uh, you were a little boy who was leading in the classroom. You were a little boy who was leading, uh, you, I don't know, when you, in your soccer team. You were a little boy who was just showing that you are just leading. And so for me, I, I really believe that uh, you, 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 people will begin to see that this one is a leader and they can tell. Even my parents, you know, before I became anything, you know, they would always say, no, this one would amount to somebody because they saw how I conducted myself and how I would lead other children and how responsible I was and, you know, and, and things like that. And I began to do that even at school, high school, the same thing, you know, I did not make it to be a prefect, neither a head boy or whatever, but wherever and with whoever I was, I was leading, I influenced them. Remember, leadership is influence. One of the issues that we, we talk about now is how do we deal with issues whereby there is leadership vacuum? Uh, it could be in political sectors, it could be in family sector. Uh, some people uh, die, mm -hmm. or some people are transferred, or some people are fired, mm -hmm. and there is a instability. Or how do people manage to rise up to? leadership vacuums because sometimes uh, they say leadership doesn't allow vacuums mm. something is going to be attracted how do you manage those so let's start with us who are here right now and who are listening to us right now don't allow a leadership vacuum 
what is, what is a leadership vacuum? Uh, the leadership vacuum is when the leader who was leading never groomed somebody to take over and so when they go should they be fired should they be should they die then there is no immediate person who can take over don't ever allow that we need to make sure that we are rising and raising up people who can take over from us anytime remember <laughs> you will die one day and uh, and you need to make sure that the vision that you have is continuing and for me i always make sure that again and again whichever organization that i work with i identify a leader who can take over for me how do we address because part of the challenges that we have there has been a concept that i might think is an error whereby people think that people are equal uh, they think that it's humility that no one really rises up or we are all need to be treated like brothers and the other churches or organizations we treat each other as brothers uh, as equals but not as hierarchy as though there's order is it godly is it god's kingdom that talks that there is hierarchy and order in terms of leadership well, well first of all i uh, I don't really love hierarchies. Eh? I, it's my personal persuasion. I don't love hierarchies. Uh, I would love for you and I to know that we are brothers together. However, I have different uh, responsibilities and you have different responsibilities. When it comes to different res our responsibilities, our roles and, and, and our giftedness, we are different. But I appreciate that you are equal to me, made in the same image by God and for a purpose. And so what I do is I don't treat you as if you are just, um, you know, a subordinate, you are a little boy or whatever. I look at you as my peer, my brother, but with different responsibilities. But how much of that is contained in language? Because leadership is a language. Uh, you talk about language and leadership. Um, uh, those that are married, you find that they say there are five love languages mm -hmm. and all the different things. Yeah. But how much is of the leadership language so that when uh, you speak to people, they are able to get you in cl with clarity your message without having to be translated that could be watered down. How much of the language plays a role in management of the leadership? Of the people, the people of that the are people and leadership. Is. Okay, okay. So, so uh, you know that uh, you haven't communicated if your message is misinterpreted. So you must slow down. Eh? Uh, uh, for me, again, is much better to be a listener listen 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 and then as you listen you begin to understand where people are and then you can share what you really want to share and then when you have shared again you ask questions did you hear me what did i say what does that mean to you how are you going to apply that you know because a lot of people uh, hear a lot of things but they don't they are hearing a different message all together. Together, the way they have deciphered the message is totally different, and um, and so you want to make sure that at least you ask, did you hear what I really meant? Because in our time, as you were saying, English is not my first language. So when you speak to me in English, uh, really, I might miss it and think that you are saying something <laughs> totally different. And, 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 and so I need, you need to ask me, did you hear what I really said or what I meant so that I can understand? Doc, one of the issues that I really would love us to, maybe I know we're, we're almost running out of time, is to address the issue of, of sudden leaders, whereby one is suddenly called to become leaders. How do you prepare yourself, number one? And secondly, there's an issue with our church and businesses where there is no succession plan, mm. how critical is that for us, for organizations, for families, for, for churches and ministries to be able to work with 
thinking about the even journeys, even though we work in faith. Yes. So, so um, crises or challenges, they always call out on leaders. And so somebody might not even have been dreaming of doing anything around leadership. And then all of a sudden, there is a crisis, there is a challenge. The, and then it calls on them, they stand up and they begin to do something about that situation. And so they become a leader in that particular instance. So it's a sudden uh, a call on their leadership. They were not prepared, but, but, but actually it's wrong when we say they were not prepared because they were living values. They were, they, they were prepared all the time, but we were not noticing that, you know, we were not noticing that, but the system or the crisis that we now have calls on them to say, come, uh, do something about this, and then they come in and, and they do something. Now, when it comes to churches and the like, we have lots of churches that are, uh, are, are tottering on uh, uh, splits right now because there has never been a succession plan. And I think it is really wrong. Jesus Christ himself had a succession plan. That is why he had those 12 disciples and he began to coach them and mentor them and prepare them to take over from him when he went to heaven. And so as a leader, as a Christian leader, I need to make sure that I'm preparing people to take over. Many of our visions die with us because we never prepared people. Maybe, maybe towards the, the end, as we're running out of time, we're in the new normal. In this perilous time, how do we lead in these difficult times across all spheres? So, I think, number one, be genuine, eh? Yeah, be genuine, be authentic, because people are looking for authentic people, real people, not fake people. And number, number two, look for op opportunities to lead. For me, anywhere you can be so you look for opportunities where you can really lead you know and uh, and and then number number three maybe would be that um, uh even if people don't notice you just do your bit yeah just do your bit one day somebody will say oh there was a leader here who did a b c d thank you so much for uh watching with us today of dr phil today Please get this book, Learn, Lead, and Leave a Legacy. And it's available. How much is the book? It's 250. The book is 250 rands. You can be able to access it. We'll put the details on the screen. You can be able to get the hold of the book and be such a, a blessing to him. And the ministry that he does, if you need maybe him to come and speak to your leaders, is available to be able to assist and coach and, and support you. Thank you for joining us today. We encourage you to keep on supporting us, share our vision, uh, meet again next Friday. But in the meantime, encourage other people to be able to, uh, uh, to download the app and connect. Uh, and let's keep this conversation, let's keep them going. Well, when time comes up, we invite other people to come on board. We're excited. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you again next time. Thank you, Dr. Fair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings.